this will be really yes, helpful. Indeed. And and we have provided the resource uh, already before the the perfect, the perfect, session. absolutely perfect. So okay, then I like to uh, ask my volunteer that if you can come inside. So then. So then we will go inside. And the first thing what I need to do, I will prep now his chest with the lack of a cream so that I have a perfect adaption for the electrodes. Yeah? So with this I put my coil on the side. And first of all, I need to prep shortly also the um, earplugs because it will get really loud. So, Steffi, they're asking. You have a. <laughs> they're asking if there's a perfect electrode positioning. Yeah, correct. So maybe then you can set up shortly, and I will do it uh, correctly. So, um, so. Yeah, I can a bit closer. So then you can see there's an image in the view, and for this you can see it. Here we have the ugolo, right? On the patient positioning here, and one part goes here. And then also even here, I prep first shortly uh, the skin. So this is kind of a uh, so that the skin is not anymore so a little bit like um, fatty or oily, so that we have a clean skin, or maybe also during the summertime, it's a little bit sweaty, or maybe uh, the women like to cream the body for the whole time. And then it's really good to have here a good prepared skin, so that we have the perfect connection. So some skins are react a little bit sensitive, so sometimes only a little bit soaked with water, could be also um, is a perfect fit. Then we have here our electrodes. And then I only need four of them. And then I pick them up. You need to be careful that you don't touch or try to touch the uh, sticky part because then it's already here. I always test my ugolum and then press it properly on with my fingers. So also the rest of it i can see also here so here i can see where the part goes down sometimes of course it's a little bit tricky uh, when i have for example a big press or so for this we have now the beat sensor of course right so and then i have here my press line there we'll choose the other one also try to push it shortly really good so that i have a good adduction here and also here, the other one goes around a little bit here on the side. And yeah, you need to find out how you can do it because everybody or every patient is a little bit different, but this will be kind of one part. And uh, Gaia, maybe you can give me shortly the easy G. Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah. Yep. And um, now in this screen, you can see also here, there's kind of a color code. Uh, because uh, what I do normally, so it's also really nice because there's kind of a, in one road, so white like the sky clouds, green like the crest, red like the heart, and black like the earth, right? So this is what you need to go to come from the sky to, uh, to the crest, to the heart. Red and then the black one like the earth. So, and that's it. And then we have a nice positioning tool here, our easy G banana. So, and then you can lay down shortly. So, where we can position this precisely. And then we remove shortly all the stuff here. And I 
actually get some comfort parts uh, as well. It's okay, so this is one. So, what I do now shortly, I make a small prep over it so that it don't get too cold <laughs> and too freezy. So, this is now the preparation for the EZG part. And now we bring only, so maybe how long does it takes now uh, to implement the speed sensor to bring it on? Kind of only a few seconds, right? So here it's really important. You can see here the dot, yeah? So important is don't turn around the coil because then your triggering point is on the other side. Only when you have facetious inversos where your heart is turned to the other side, then it's okay to turn the coil around. But in the normal case, when the heart is on the one side, you need to look, okay, where's my beat sensor? It's here, so this needs to be there. And then you need to probably push it down test a little bit higher. Depends on the height of the patient. Fix the coil. And then also here, I bring my table up easily. And then now what you can see already, I have a perfect EZG signal. And the beat sensor signal, I make kind of a short redoing step outside directly on the console because I don't waste my time here. So this makes for me also a nicer workflow as well. So then I fix uh, the call as well, also here on both sides. And then we give them the alarm ball as well. And also here. Everything is okay? Good. Perfect. Good. So, okay. My patient is now directly to, or ready to go into the board. And here you can see when I press uh, the beats in or the card towards region, I only need to press it. And that's it. So I can bring easily my patient here directly inside. I only need to take care of my switch and the microphone. So, and then now, let's give me just a few seconds. I will switch now the screen to the um, user interface so that we can start the scanning. Yeah, just one second. So now you should see also I will reshare shortly the view perfect. So I hope you can see all the stuff perfectly. Good. Yes, we can. Okay. Perfect. Thanks for the information. So now what you can see here, I have two signals or uh, I will change here this to my EZG signal, or maybe the sensor first EZG. And now what I do every time when I go outside and I would like to use the beat sensor, I start here a short relearning. This is not the initial relearning step. This we need to implement it first as well. So this takes a short seconds.
So, and voila, now you can see also here perfectly fit the beat sensor working properly as well as also like the EZG here uh, in the screen. So now, because we want to run also the beat sensor, this is then really important because now I need to change first the trigger source and later we will change also then one scan for the EZG and then we can see kind of a comparison scan, yeah? So then let's start first with the beat sensor because here it's really important that we implement also here kind of a training step. And also here, this is really nice because with this automatic assist cardiac workflow, you can apply the briefing capability to your patient's need. So remember, you need to hold the breath for 16 seconds, right? And exhale, yeah? You can change it, uh, maybe an inhale, but this could be a little bit um, sometimes tricky with the image quality, but it's also completely fine. When there's no other way it's possible, then inhale works also, yeah? But the best way, of course, to do cardiac is with exhale. What you can do, you can increase, you can make it smaller, or you can enlarge also the pause in between. And here you have also multiple languages, what you can apply, or you can record, of course, your own dialect or language uh, from Nigeria. So all over the world. So then let's start. So in the beginning, don't wonder, the beat sensor has a kind of a short flat line but this is normal. So here we make a kind of a first overview localizer. So now we can see here the heart and now I have my triangle and I will positioning here the perfect uh, center of the heart. So let's go. Perfect. Then I have here my dedicated localizer and um, also what you can see here, for example, you can see the selected calls. And here, when you like to run the beat sensor and also the heart, it's uh, really nice because we like run, but know that the uh, beat sensor or the pyotone is uh, in the height or in the shape of the second body coil element, whereas it needs to be cover the heart. So then let's go. So when you decide, for example, to go only for beat sense or EZG, then you have, of course, also the option to go for the respiratory sensor that you can see, okay, maybe how is the patient breathing in and out or it's holding the breath? Is there a kind of a information? But let's go back to the EZG here in this case that we see both signals. So the next step, the beat sensor training step here in uh, this part is really important because with this step, we train the beat sensor where the information or the motion comes from. And now you can see, so I put then here my beat sensor learning step into the heart so that I have it there right located. So it's kind of perfectly fit. So, and then I asked you to be really quiet because I will turn now the microphone from the MRR really loud. And then maybe you will hear a kind of a really small tick tick. So this was my phone. <laughs> and uh, so let's go. Just one second. So now you can hear the briefing sound of an MRI, right? So now I press go. So this is normal standard. 
introduction. Hopefully it's getting not too loud. Does it seem scanning? Maybe you hear it? And this is the test scan from the beat sensor where they get trained. So, okay, was it easy? I think so, right? So now what I do as a next step, so I mute my system reader uh, again. So, and then I plan shortly here kind of an overview. This is always nice to uh, have a global information about the lung because we could have also here a potential risk of, yeah, lung emphysema or something what goes to the lung. And this, of course, affect also the cardiac performance as well. So let's press start. So at the moment, I will do all the stuff you can see here. There's are the green spots, not here in the EZG. It's only at the beat sensor. And here you can open up kind of a live window, the inline display that you can see directly the coverage of all the part. And the nice thing is when you're new to the field of cardiac scanning. You have here kind of an implemented guidance inside where you have your images. So you can have the images what is originally there. You can rearrange the images, make your own images as well, or you can put your own description here inside so that you have your perfect guidance to guide what fits to your needs, um, especially here. So this is really perfect. So then I can see, okay, what is important here for the images? I need to cover kind of the whole heart here. And uh, this is kind of a special AI localizer. So normally you need three spots um, in a room to create kind of a plane. Now we set five spots and get all the information. Please breathe in, breathe out and hold your breath. So there you hear also the breath commanders. So now, and here this looks already familiar. You had it already a few minutes before where Gaia showed you already a small video. And here you have your guidance, right? Here's all the information where you can go through. And here you see the anatomical correspondencing from the patient as well. So now let's check that the system makes all the stuff right and we are happy. So here we have the left atrium. Here's our reference image and here's the actual image. Okay, that's perfect. Also directly the Arctic Road is already also here built inside, right? We click on the reference image. We can see here the same part. Also here with the right ventricular, uh, we see it also here perfectly. Left ventricle, it's also nice. And also the apex comes there. But maybe when you say, okay, I want to maybe retouch it or something, you only click the spot and then say, okay, uh, I want to have it here, for example. And that's it. Yeah. So it's completely adaptable, but also it's a nice tool to be fast and train to cardiac examination because normally you need, uh, need to do all the steps step by step, so two chamber, four chamber, two chamber, three chamber, something like this, right? And then sometimes it's complicated to get the correct view, yeah? With this AI scout, you have immediately a kind of a good uh, imaging in all the planes. And now, uh, which plane is this? Can you write this to the chat, please? Only the line. What do you think? Which? Which chamber is it? 
it's the tree chamber view. So when I scroll down, I can see here my tree chamber view. And also here, this line is the two chamber view and this line is the four chamber view. Perfect, yeah, correct. So, and when I notice, I can see also here, okay, I can see where the line's going through. And also here, when I say, okay, I want to tilt maybe something like a little bit more for any reason, whatever, you every time the master uh, and say, okay, I want to tilt a little bit of anatomical reasons or something like this. But with this standard tool or guidance tool, you have a brilliant start to work with cardiac in a good, fast way. So now what we're doing are here is a kind of a ventricular, ventricular function uh, overview. And here I can say, okay, display my slices and I have it all. So then now the system gives me also here an effusor card. I have the beat sensor triggering here. I can make a recapturing of the cycle and start the definition. So the first is kind of an overview. And now, voila, I have all the different chambers directly in one step. Here I have the three chamber, two chamber, and four chamber view directly, right? And this makes it so fantastic and easy. So, and when I have the thinly segmented uh, part, then I have immediately also here all the stuff and then beat sensor mode. Uh, okay, let's go. And I think this is a kind of really easy way. Also for me now, I don't do cardiac every day now uh, compared to my clinical time. So you get also a little bit lost in the training. So it's also for me a really brilliant tool to get up to speed and like to show it to you because I find it so easy and useful, of course, definitely for the beginning. So then you can see also here, there comes a voice put out. And also here you can see the green line is measured to the beat sensor cardiac. After we finish the beat sensor, I will track and drop down one part and we rerun it with the EZG as well. So the other long axis. So then let's see. Et voilà. Now we have all the different chambers here, the four chambers, here the three chambers, and now hopefully I picked the correct two chambers. Perfect. So, and the nice thing is also later when you are experienced, yeah, or you want to do something else, then uh, we have a kind of a short setup. Um, short axis, for example, when you want to do rest or stress perfusion, for example. So here it's nice because the system don't produce a kind a slice 2.1. It's exactly when I switch my setup, I can choose it here for the basic, for the middle and for the apex like this, right? And also when I here in the middle, maybe I will maybe enlarge this a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. So the system don't like this. So it's only jumped to the next perfect slice so that you have a good control when you do then the stress and rest perfusion for you, right? So this makes also easy for planning. And also when you do then myomaps, for example, the motion correction, maybe we will run also one of them uh, in a second. And then let's go also here. I will stop this and also shortly. So, 
perfect. Now I have already the perfect overview for my part. So completely from the basic to the apex. And the cool thing is also here when we go to the inline um, and then we go to the cardiac tool, there's kind of an automatic ventricular function evaluation. So this means um, the system gives you automatic the ejection fraction of the heart immediately after the scan is ready and finished and calculated. So let's start it. Let's double check shortly here. And the physical card, what we had, beat sensor, perfect. And let's go. So then we can turn the inline display on as well so that we have a kind of a live overview from the cardiac scan. And so what we do now, I will track and drop down the uh, short axis and I will go here inside, go to the fusier card and I will change my trigger source to the EZG. So, and then I will type here EZG behind it. So, and then you can see, hopefully I don't forget any other stuff. <laughs> so, and then the system probably run also the same stuff with the EZG. And then you can see the green line not anymore with the beat sensor. You can see it here with the EZG as well. What do you think so far? It's just an easy planning. You can write uh, in the chat when you like. So, looks it complicated or not? Perfect. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Perfect. So. Then Gaya take, can take over and I grab me a coffee. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, yet, not, not yet, not yet. Okay. <laughs> so, but this is really, this makes the stuff really easy and uncomplicated. So, for example, maybe one important information, cardiac could be also really tough sometimes. So, uh, especially when you make a stress cardiac, so there's already one information. Uh, you have kind of a kick out button here, the house, we can immediately evacuate a patient from the bore when they get maybe kind of a heart attack or something happens. So heart is sometimes also difficult when you do something. So here, uh, when you stop the sequence, this is also already pried, and then you can bring the patient out immediately. So yeah, this is maybe one part what you can do also as well. Also here, the ventilation is there. Maybe the headphones you can also adapt here the in-room setting with the playback background. Uh, also here, inhale, exhale, um, you can change this. But now you saw shortly, et voila, there was the uh, ejection fraction already. And now you can see here, the beat sensor has a flat line, but the EZG, it's now taking care of the measurement. So, so, just a second, we have a short moment. I will switch from the screen to the other side. 
so that you can see here, this is actually the immediately result so that you can see here maybe the text. So it's from today, this evening, this patient. And then you can see also here where they take the base from the heart. And also here immediately you get the ejection fraction, the stroke volume, um, as well here and diastolic and systolic volume. So really nice to have here kind of a good information immediately after the scan. So and also here we can start and play all of them immediately. What you can do also, for example, you can go to the camera tool here and make it a little bit slower that you can see the motion also here really nicely. So, and then a few last scans for the other part. Let's switch shortly back to the other view. And after the last scan, the beat sensor is also back. And yeah, so now what you can do is also we can implement also here kind of a Maya map. So where we can have kind of a motion corrected images. So here, for example, um, so we are scanning now at the moment on a 1.5 Tesla system. Um, and on this system is also the possibility that you have also the T2 star quantification. So all the different quantification, what you have here, so T1 uh, is basically for fibrosis, amyloidosis. Uh, the T2 map is for water and edema um, uh, searching functionality or differentiation. And the T2 star is for kind of iron overload into the heart based on it. So let's choose one of them. And now what I need to do, I need to take care of it. Which trigger source I have based here. The good thing is I have uh, two of them. <laughs> so I can make a short update here. And a nice thing is also here, uh, what we did in the beginning was also that we have uh, two different subsets, right? So what I can do is also here, I can use my different subset. I can replace all the stuff in integrated, but uh, one of them is totally fine and it's enough to scan there. So let's double check the future card where I am in. Okay, I have the trigger source, uh, but now let's use also here the easy G as well. So let's start. The patient get also here a short briefing command. And then now you can see the green checkpoints. So perfect. So, and voila. And then now let's bring shortly all the different stuff here inside. So, what you can see, we scan different echoes. This is one echo and it's the other one. And then we can create also here kind of a Maya map. So motion corrected images. And here can have a kind of a information uh, and you can do then here kind of a 
measurement in the tool. So maybe let's switch shortly to the other side. Then I can show this to you. So here we have the information from the heart. And when we are on the other side, we have a kind of a freehand tool. So the best thing is first, really like to enlarge your cardiac image because the drawing is then much easier. And then you can draw a little error around the tissue, what's interested for you. And then you can see the mean value uh, of the system and compare it uh, to a list um, where you get the information what is maybe or which disease is it, for example, right? So, and with this maybe, yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm finished. Exactly. I'm going to come with you, and I'm back in. I'm back on <laughs> with you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for all the the scanning. Um, I put a little question in the um, in the chat if people actually saw any difference between um, the scans that you did with the beat sensor and the ones that you did uh, with the ECG. Yeah, I hope not. I hope <laughs> not. I think nobody answered. Let's yeah. See. Uh, let's, let's see. see. Is there an answer? So you can see also the TV studio here, what we have. Exactly. It's also completely live. Uh -huh. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Then um, I think that uh, this has been a really informative uh, session that you've been able to show people that the mapping, you've, we, did the, we did the CINE imaging, yes. you showed them the sensor, yeah. you showed them how to put the ECGs mm -hmm. on the patient, um, how the table works, yeah. how the learning sets work. Um, it's a lot for one evening, huh? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so we invite them back for next year for flow? Yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do you, we do it now frequently, right? Every okay. year. <laughs> good, good. Um, so I guess that's... Um, that would be fantastic. Uh, okay, good. All right. Then with that, should we yeah. sign off from yeah. Germany? Correct. Yeah, let's sign off when you don't have any questions. Last few chats. <laughs> Otherwise... Thank you, and thank the heart you. is with you. Yes. <laughs> thank you a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you bye guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. So. Thank you. <laughs>